occasions where these dudes chase a woman, yes, but that's when you usually get dumped, you know, uh, you usually end up in a transactional relationship, and then you dudes get mad about that when it don't work out, I mean, what the hell you expect? You cannot chase a woman down and then turn around and ask her to submit to you. You can't chase her down, wine and dine her, buy her flowers and do all kinds of things to win her over and then turn around and tell her now you gotta bow to me. Don't work that way bro. She never bowed to you, you chased her. So the dynamics of y'all interaction is already set, you gotta keep it how you started. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it's true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. One of the main attributes of a man, and y'all know this here, a man is supposed to be the level-headed one. He's supposed to be the clearer thinking one. He's supposed to be the one that, that, that have a deeper level of understanding. He's supposed to be the one that has more wisdom. But when you don't possess these things, when you say things that make no sense, when you say things that just are silly at, at their face, innately silly, right? Things that don't make sense on the surface, Women lose respect for you. One of the reasons why I've never had a woman to not respect me is because I'm not a halfway. And I'm saying this because I'm looking at some of the comments that I received on that video talking about the basketball uh, players with the white wives thing, right? And I, I, I encourage everybody to chime in, right? I'm, I'm not knocking nobody. Please, by all means, share your views, you know? But you have to understand, I speak strictly from first-hand knowledge. Difference. Difference. I do not talk about that which I do not know. And I, and I draw everything in my life from a foundation of fact. There's really only three ways to learn, people. My brothers, listen to this here. You gotta hear this. There's only three ways to learn. First-hand experience. Being taught by somebody directly who had the first-hand experience. Or actually observing the experience in real time take place. In other words, you are there watching the thing unfold in real time. I'm not talking about you talk to somebody who watched it unfold because now it starts getting iffy because when you're watching, that's still a matter of perception. You have a, you have a right to talk about what you've seen, but you don't really understand it like those that you are watching. The people that you are watching, their understanding of what you are observing is different because they are in it. They are not observing it. They see this stuff differently from the inside. Listen, but this is not a football game where the coach can see things that you can't see because you're on the field. This is not like that. This is not that, that, this is not that part of the game. You know what I'm saying? This is real life. And in real life, be before the event unfold, there are things that take place that leads to that event that the observer don't know about. All the observer knows is what they observe at the time in real time. But you can learn from that some to some degree. You can learn from that to some degree. But really the only two primary ways to learn is first-hand experience and being taught by somebody with first-hand experience. I teach from first-hand experience. And I teach very little from uh, the experiences of others and I teach very little from things that I've seen. 90% of what I teach, 85% maybe of what I teach, is strictly from my personal first-hand experiences. I found it odd that, you know, one of these brothers tried to attack me about that whole basketball thing. I explained perfectly why black men 
you know, end up with white women. This has nothing to do with none of the stuff that y'all say. All that stuff sound right. All this stuff about they they wanna um they wanna try to get get a pass in society. They they looking for status. All that sounds good. But the truth of the matter is, a white woman is no status for me. Trust me, I got a German wife. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just as much of a nigga in, in America as you are. They have no status from nobody that mess with them. Unless you're trying to hang around her friends. Unless you're trying to hang in their society. And even that only extends to her immediate friends. Outside of that, you have no status with them either. Those immediate friends might accept you, might, might, might accept you as one of their own, but that's gonna be done on condition. That's gonna be done based on how you how you allow them to perceive you as a black man and black people in general. Or you gonna sit there and let them talk bad about black people. When they start talking about society and, and economics, or you gonna let them dump on black people. First of all, we don't only marry white women. That is a myth above myths. I mean, that is the, that, that, that is the greatest lie ever told. There are a world of women out there and the black American man actually has options. Most of you brothers don't know y'all have options because y'all listen to dudes like O'Shea Duke Jackson, you know what I'm saying, who, who don't have an option no matter where he is because of the way he looks. So y'all don't understand that y'all really have options. Y'all y'all, y'all, y'all are sitting back living through these people, these personalities online. Get out in the world and you will see you have options. Women actually like black American men. So since women actually like us, we can actually go different places. But here's the problem you're gonna have. If those women look at you like you are a fool, you will not be respected by them either. If you approach these women under this red pill type mentality, those women will walk on you also. One of the things that you don't understand that I do from firsthand experience from actually dealing with couples and having friends that are married is that the overwhelming majority, I mean, every marriage that I know of that's successful will qualify according to y'all definition as being non-traditional. I don't care if they white, I don't care if they black, I don't care if they Latinas, Mexicans, Asians. If they are together and they've been together for a long time, their marriage is what you would what you would call non-traditional. They the real marriages simply do not function the way y'all believe they should. And that's part of the problem. So when you meet these women and you start talking about what you want a woman to do and be, what you don't understand is that you don't have to say none of that. She's gonna do these things automatically if you are if you are in your position, she's gonna fall into her position. But if you start having to try to tell her how to be, you got a problem already. And y'all don't understand that. You know, let me tell y'all something, real, real, real talk, this is a real story. You know, I never really asked women for um, sex when I was coming up. In my younger days, I never asked for sex. In fact, all through my life, really. I never did. I would have female friends that, that I would kick it with for weeks, sometimes months, and never ask to smash, you know? Cause see, I wasn't the kind of dude that did everything based on a uh, quid pro quo, you know what I'm saying? Everything wasn't ad hoc, you know? It was like, hey boo, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to catch this movie, you know? Like she, if she's around me at the time, look, like, actually man, I'm about to catch this movie in about 20 minutes, you know what I'm saying? You want to roll? And she want to roll, she could roll. You know, and it was just like that. You know, I take care of him, pay for everything. It didn't matter, you know. And, but at the same time, I never treated these women like they owed me anything. I never treated them like they, they, you know, I, I, I never posted like that. I just would enjoy their company. We would have fun. We go walk uptown or wherever we was at. We go walk the streets, the strip, you know what I'm saying? Look at things. After a few hours, I would drop her off, you know what I'm saying? Tell her later and I would, I would go somewhere else and smash. Cause I mean, I had women. I wasn't, I didn't smash them, but I had women to smash. I mean, I, I, I had women. 
So what would always eventually happen is that these women will reach a point on their own where they just say, hey, why don't you um come over by me tonight? You know what I'm saying? I will drop them off like, no, nah, won't you come in? No, come stay a while. Mm, okay. It will always reach a point where they would just offer it. And we would go inside, and it would just go in the back, you hit a water running, take a shower, and then come out of lingerie. I never asked for it. I never, and, and, and see, by me planning the way I did, the woman understood that when I come out this shower, when I come out this room, I need to be ready to please his eyes. I need to be pleasing to his mind. I need to be pleasing to his spirit. I need to be pleasing to his soul. They understood this. So they just came and did it. And, and see, I gained a certain level of respect from these women by the way I moved. And on top of that, when we talk, because that's what you do a lot, when we talk, they get to hear an elevated understanding of life. They get to see that, okay, this dude is out here thugging, big old pistols in his pants, but he ain't dumb. This is why I had schoolgirls. Y'all not hear me when I talk. I tell y'all in these videos, I dated mostly nerdy girls. I like the schoolgirls. That has always been my flavor. I don't like these thoughts, these hoochies, these hood rats. Never been my type. And I'm from the ghetto, but never been my type. You know what I'm saying? I like the schoolgirls. I like the quiet girl. I like the more mild-mannered girl. So I enjoy these women's um, company because their, their, their female energy was soothing to me. And whether we made it long-term or short-term, I am friends with all those women right now to this day. I go home to New Orleans, the women see me, they run across me, it's all love, it's hugs, how you been, talking, they don't care if they husband standing there, they gonna talk to me, it's all love, all good, you know, why, 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 because it was nothing but peace between us. Everybody's not gonna be in your life forever. Some people just cross your path for a period of time and go on it, you know, go a different way. Sometimes you the one going a different way. I mean, it's not always about her. But truthfully, you should be always traveling your way. You the man. She should be attached to you. And when she's no longer interested in going that direction, she has a right to break off and go her own way. You got to respect that. But see, me as a man, I've always understood these things. I've always understood human nature. I've always understood life. I've always understood how things go. So nothing, none of that stuff bothered me. Now I'm saying all this to say this is one of the reasons why these women don't respect y'all brothers because when y'all talk, everything y'all say is just a regurgitation of whatever popular narrative is out there among certain thinking groups. You know, as, as black people, we tend to want to put everything neatly into little boxes that we can then explain away. And uh, the, the problem with that is that the box itself is wrong. As somebody once said, you put the jacket on the people that just don't fit. The box itself is wrong. When you start talking about interracial dating, if you want to talk about that, then you got to separate how you approach that topic based on who you're talking about. If you're talking about men, you got to approach it one way. You talk about women, you got to approach it another way. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. Why is it the truth? Now, here is the wisdom of what Brother Kush brings to y'all. It's simple. It's a simple fact of the universal law of selection. Women choose. You cannot hold black men to the same standard of review in regards to interracial dating as you do with black women because black women are choosing the men that they are with and black men are being chosen by the women that they are with. Different. Now you could say well that brother had other women that he could have picked through to settle down with. He had, he had eight black women and one white girl. He picked the one white girl. You could say that. But now we go to first-hand experience. Why did he pick the one white girl? Was she actually different or did he just pick her because she was white? 
See, you can't just put that neatly in a little box because you don't know. So now you gotta ask, okay, why did he pick the one white girl? Was she better? Was she different? Did she bring something different to the table? Was she really a, a, a better person than the eight black women? You can, you, you can debate that, but nobody knows that answer but that brother or anybody who actually know all of those people personally and intimately personally. I ain't talking about from a distance, I'm talking personally, intimately personally. And I don't mean intimate, y'all think intimate, everything. No, not like that, I mean intimately personally. You know what I'm saying? So, but on the other hand, this black woman, it don't matter, cause she don't, it's not her picking through the men. She could be dating 12 black dudes and one white boy the dude she really want is the dude she's gonna put the most energy into. She could be getting smashed by all these other men, but the man she really want, she's gonna pursue him differently. She's gonna put an effort into getting him. If that man is the white man, then that means that is the man she chose. On the other side, the black man is not chosen. He is being chosen. You see how simple this is. Do you see how simple this is? You see, I ain't got to get into all these old social conspiracies about, you know, mind control and white supremacy, and I ain't got to get into all that. I don't need to know why the sister done what she did. I don't need to know, you know, I, or, or why the brother did. I mean, I don't need to know the brother's reason for ending up with the white girl, and I don't need to know the sister's reason for choosing the white boy. All I know is she chose that white boy and that white girl chose that white that black dude. That's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. Now, are there rare occasions where these dudes chase a woman? Yes, but that's when you usually get dumped. You know, uh, you usually end up in a transactional relationship and then you dudes get mad about that when it don't work out. I mean, what the hell you expect? You cannot chase a woman down and then turn around and ask her to submit to you. You can't chase her down, wine and dine her, buy her flowers and do all kinds of things to win her over and then turn around and tell her, now you got to bow to me. Don't work that way, bro. She never bowed to you. You chased her. So the dynamics of y'all interaction is already set. You got to keep it how you started. If you started like that, then that's how you got to keep that relationship. But what the problem is, y'all know this and y'all okay with that as long as y'all can have that woman. See, that's the transactional part. But when that woman get tired and leave, y'all wanna get online and talk about the woman like she's a dog. Oh, that's no good thing, you know what I'm saying? She just dumped me after I did this and did that. Did. You ain't never did nothing for that woman. Everything you've done, you've done for yourself. Every gift you gave her, you gave to her only because that gained you favor with her. You never cared about what she wanted or how she felt. Your goal was to try to figure out a way to keep her in your life. But when you are chosen, you don't have to try to figure out how to keep her in your life because she is where she wants to be. I'm going to say it again. When you are chosen, you don't have to go out of your way to try to figure out how to keep her in your life because she is where she wants to be. But do you see how simple I explained that? How simply I explained that? I don't have to get into all these conspiracies. I don't have to get into all this craziness trying to figure out whether or not this person is a sellout. That comes later. You know, if you want to start breaking down the characteristics of the black woman with the white man, then that comes later. But on the surface, we know she's with that white boy because she wanted to be with that white boy. She made sure she put her beard in. Because that is how the universal law of natural, natural selection works. The woman will choose. A man can only be with the woman that wants to be with him. That's it. So when you see that brother with that white girl, I mean, yeah, there is a chance that he chased her down and tried to woo her over. But there's also more than likely a fact that she wanted him. That she put herself in a position to get him. That she proved to her to, to him that she that she is a better mate for him. That she is better suited for him. Because that's how the universal law, law of natural selection operates. 
So if everything goes into order, then on the surface, before you get into anything else, you know and understand one thing, that the, that the reason why a black man is with a non-black woman is not the same reason why a black woman is with a non-black man. That's at the surface. We don't need to get into everything else after that. We don't need to start, you know, if you want to start trying to analyze the individual, you could, but you would have to know that individual. See, that's the problem too. You can't just judge a person from the outside. Do you know this woman enough to call her a coon? Suppose the white boy just got flavor. Suppose the white boy just smooth with it, you know what I'm saying? Suppose he just got something about him that she likes. You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe she thinks she's good looking. You know, there's nothing wrong with preference. There's nothing wrong with looking at certain, certain textures of hair, certain tones of skin and thinking it look good. Maybe she thinks that whiteness is, 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 is handsome, it's beautiful. Maybe she likes it. I don't know. On the other side, it's the same thing. But it doesn't matter because at the, at the surface, he's with a woman that chose him. There is a chance that this dude chased this white girl down. But in more cases than not, he is with a woman that chose him. Now, you can psychoanalyze him if you know him, but you can't just look at that and say, hey, go another one of these old coon Negroes, he want to get a white girl. How do you know? That dude may have been on bad, bad times, man. That white girl might have came through, came through for him like a champ. When everybody else turned their back on him, she might have been there standing tall. How do you know what you see? I mean, even with the sister, same thing. She might be with a white boy that she might have been on bad, bad town. The white boy came through like a champ. Never held nothing over her head. Ne ne never used it as a transaction, you know what I'm saying? Just did it out of the kindness of his heart towards her because he cared about her. You don't know what you're looking at when you see people at, the, at a distance. So you can't always just put these labels on top of people. And this brings me to the point of this long rant. If you keep yourself thinking within boxes, that is unattractive to women. They're not gonna respect that. A man that cannot think outside of a box is not a man of wisdom and understanding at all. Understanding and wisdom, shall I say, at all. So a woman is gonna be innately turned off from that. She, she's not gonna know why she's being turned off, but she's gonna be turned away from that because you're not expressing the kind of understanding and the kind of wisdom that a God should. You're supposed to be the leader. You, you're supposed to be the Khalifa. You're supposed to be the God. You should have a certain degree of understanding of how things go in life. But because so many of y'all never have life experiences, you rely heavily on learning about life from online sources, from people like Kevin Samuels, from people like uh, O'Shea Du Jackson, from people like Anton and Fresh and fit. I mean, I can go on and on. You know, I'm going to end with this. I know y'all seen Kevin Samuels as though he was really wise because he would say some things that were right. But what y'all don't understand is that <laughs> Kevin Samuels was actually very, very smart. You know? See, the thing is, he understood how... He, he was an image consultant. So he understood the power of perception. So he would always structure his arguments from a certain base point. One, traditional marriage. Two, high value man. Three, economics. That was, that was his fallback points. And because he will fall back and, and structure every debate with women based on traditional marriage, high value man stuff and economics, it was always easy for him to look like he was right because y'all all believe these things. See, once you start dealing with economics, that's something that, that's a belief that's shared by everybody. For instance, like, as long as you're making like a good man based on a man having his stuff together, women not gonna argue with that. They're not gonna argue against that. But see, they don't, they don't, they don't tell their experiences about all the so-called good men that they tried to date that were abusive. 
that had gambling problems, that had drug problems, that had alcohol problems, that had fetishes. They don't talk about this. See, for some reason, that conversation never gets out in the open. The women don't talk about that. It's only cool to dump on certain types of men. So when stuff don't work out, you know, for whatever reason, you know, because they're still human, they might clash with a woman, it might be the woman's fault, might be his fault, who knows? But the point is, when it does break up, it's easy to say, why, why you mess with a dude that don't have his stuff together? You know, you should have got your high value man. See, and this is how he was able to woo and confuse everybody. See, but a brother like me, I just checked Kevin Samuels now. Because none of that stuff he said was true. None of it. He was literally a broken clock. He was only right twice out the whole argument, and that was by accident. You know what I'm saying? Just because it, it happened to be right. But because of his premises was always based, first of all, the high value man is a straw man. It don't even exist, right? Traditional marriage, I'm gonna get into that in my next video. Whose tradition? Whose tradition are we talking about? Do you not understand that tradition, the institution of marriage means that this is a way to control marriage. Who is controlled in these traditional marriages? And y'all wonder why women see that as slavery, you know? And when you start talking about social economics or economics in general, you know, these three premises are all based within the system. So now Brother Carl Thomas, you know, Brother Carl Thomas and I had a good little back and forth on my last video. On this video, actually, I'm referring to this is the problem we have, that we're not going to be able to break this system because too many black men depend on this system to do its bidding. What they want out of women, they can't get unless the system force women to do it. And they are more than fine with that. And this is a problem. So on that note, I'm going to end it there. It was a rant, I know, but sometimes you got to come off the riff, you know what I'm saying? Not really so much of a topic, but just come off the cuff with it, you know? So anyway, that's it for this one here. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, I'm out of here, I'm Brother Kush, aka the Black Golf. So long. Uh,